Hello everyone, it's System, and this is Astroblog. Hope everyone is well, having a busy day. I myself, I'm having a pretty excellent one actually, so let's get back to this pretty cool pack here and uh, push forward. Uh, you may notice that uh, I kind of redecorated the entire place, so the base looks completely different. Uh, the outside's still the same, I haven't changed nothing. I just wanted to have this like conversion where you just walk through this kind of, you know, little temple here, walk inside and just boom, or in space, you know what I mean? Just <laughs> looks pretty pretty cool as far as, as far as I'm concerned. I like how it turned out. So yeah, the blocks I used here are actually the factory blocks and the Futura blocks. So if you kind of look at them, I guess we go to uh, Futura, check that out. To make those blocks, to get eight is that. Uh, I got some stone and some redstone, which isn't too bad. Then the Futura for a couple iron, I think it is. Not Futura, it would be factory. Go ahead and make the base one. And just, yeah, grab your stone, a couple of iron, you get 32. So they go pretty far, so it's not too bad. It's like a giant cost of resources. But I'm quite happy of how most of this turned out. Those ones are factory too, they're um, Futura. But uh, you just kind of make the blocks, then throw them in here with the chisel, and you can kind of change them to any version of them as, as you want, right? And chisel has tons of blocks there. So lots of options to decorate to your heart's content. I also went ahead and upgraded my jetpack, so I got that done. And I gotta check my quest to see if I did anything else. I don't think I really did anything else. Uh, I finished off this quest line here for the actual just chest here. This is from a mod called Iron Chest. Uh, they're pretty good storage though, so I went ahead and did that. I just got them done, they're really easy. Iron takes iron, gold takes gold, diamond takes diamond, a little bit of other stuff. So got them finished up. And uh, I don't think I did anything else except for make more of these resources. And I didn't have the lead one unlocked, so I didn't unlock these ones we did earlier, the Electrum and the Empire. So I just unlocked that quest there. So yeah, we're making pretty good progress here. Also, one issue I ran into with the Digital Miner, got the Digital Miner here. It's actually still running. It's got 700 more blocks. Um, it's not pulling all the ores out of the ground. So yesterday, if I actually hit reset on this, go to config, I set the filter different. You can see here I actually set specific ores this time. I set it with the ore deck last time with the ore and the asterisks. That isn't pulling up all the blocks for some reason. So when I dug down, so I dug a hole all the way down the bedrock because I didn't feel like I was getting what I was supposed to. Like I wasn't getting much copper and I wasn't getting much coal. So I dug all the way down. I found these ores and there may be more down there. I just dug a three by three hole all the way down the bedrock, ran into what I ran into. Like I wasn't even grabbing tin and stuff. Um, so I don't know what's going on there because it should be pulling everything, but it's not. So I may have to do some digging, grab all the ores, and set it up this way instead, which would be new filter uh, item stack. Then you just put a copy of the ore in there and use that as a filter instead. It's just, uh, yeah, it's not doing its thing, man. Uh, what we're going to work on today, starting off, I think it's going to be power because we're really limited on power right now. And I want to be able to get rid of this horrible cabling and stop using different kinds of cabling and stuff. Just focus on one kind. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get everything together and I uh, get to that. And okay, the first thing we're getting into here, like I said, is a new power setup. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this. This is pulverized lead, pulverized tin, and uh, combined, they actually make silver. I also went ahead and made this uh, second pulverizer here, just so we had access to one. And uh, the setting I have it to, I can just feed this chest. I have it set to in and out, so it'll pull in something if we can pulverize it. If it can't, we'll put it back in the chest. So that's the way I have that set up there. So that is pretty cool. But uh, we should be able to just take this stuff and go like that. Maybe the recipe is the opposite. There we go. Go ahead and grab that, get ourselves some silver, because uh, we're gonna need a bunch of that, right? I need to change this around. This was just a quick setup too, to get all of our different ores kind of smelted. <laughs> Did I have a coal in there? That was so derpy. Anyway, let's uh, drop you off, I suppose. Oh, that's different kinds. Yeah, there's too many different kinds of the ores and stuff. It gets really kind of confusing, especially when you're trying to smelt things. A lot of the colors are really close too. But anyway, we'll drop you off. So what we're going to do here, like I said, is uh, I guess process silver. I just walked away from there for no reason because uh, we're going to need a couple of it at least right away. Let's do that. And then we're going to automate it with uh, XNet. That is kind of the plan. We may do the XNet part first uh, because it's easier. And I don't have the controller up there. Let's go to controller. Grab that. Where is that? The XNet controller at, at X. <laughs> there we go. Grab that, grab that. So this is a add-on RF tools, really cool little mod, and now we're gonna be using it to go ahead and do things. So let's go ahead and get some of those things done, right? It's a, just a full kind of automation system. It is uh, quite unique and quite useful and very powerful. So we're gonna go ahead and use it. Do that, and uh, we might have everything else there. So there's the actual controller. I was gonna need some of these connectors here. Uh, I hopefully have all that. <laughs> How many of these connectors do I need? Probably about 12 or so. So let's go grab those. 
Then we're going to need a couple advanced ones as well. And I'll explain uh, the difference between them later on. Uh, right now, it doesn't matter. I just want to do a limited amount of them because I don't have a ton of Ender Pearl, which is something else we need to deal with with uh, really soon, actually. But uh, that should be everything we need from XNet itself. Hopefully, we have enough silver here so we can actually progress. That should be enough to get us started. So the power generation we're going to use is going to be the uh, dynamos. So we're going to use the magmatics. Um, they they make lava. I mean, they take lava. They don't make lava at all. They take lava at big power. So that is kind of the idea there. I need to take you, throw you in there. We're going to go ahead and set up four of these and uh, see how much power we can get out of them. I think we should get close to a thousand anyway. And uh, that shouldn't be too bad. But there we go. We got ourselves a quest there. And that's cool. Uh, we're also going to need some hardened block stuffs. And I think we have everything. I did do a batch of, uh, what you call it there, uh, hardened glass. That's cool. Also going to need a servo. So let's go ahead and grab one of them. And uh, let's start uh, looking at what else we need. We're going to need some upgrades. We're also going to do a battery. It's going to be this energy cell. Maybe we'll get to that right now. Because so that looks pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do that. Grab ourselves a lead gear. Because uh, everyone wants a lead gear. It's very important. <laughs> grab an energy cell frame. And then see if we can make the rest here. I don't know if we have any redstone blocks, to be honest. But actually, there were some in this temple when I was building it. So that handles that. Then outside of that, what else do we need here? We need these boosters because we're going to have to speed up our lava production. We have the controller there. Looks like we almost have everything. We just need a bunch of upgrades. We're going to be using these uh, auxiliary transmission coils. So they're going to make the machines uh, produce a little more power. And more power is better power. So let's go ahead and grab how many of those have we got. We need about eight of these. We might not have enough silver. So let's head back and uh, see what we got processed for silver. There we go. We can go ahead and uh, see if we can get these produced here. Sweet. And then we're going to upgrade the machines themselves uh, separately. So that's like a two-step process. Um, <laughs> I can't get enough iron to save me. <laughs> anyway, let's drop uh, that silver there. We've got that many. And then we should be able to grab three more. One, two, three. That looks good. And then we'll need how many of these hard kits? One for each one. So they're like different levels, right? So this upgrades it to the first level. This one upgrades it to the second level. And uh, we're going to need... One for each machine and one for the battery, so we'll need five of them. So let's grab five of you. Let's go ahead and see if we can grab five of the hardens now. Hopefully I have enough Envire, because I think I only made like a stack. <laughs> anyway, that's good. Let's go ahead and grab some silver gears. Of course we don't have enough. Always a little short. But uh, yeah, we'll just process the rest of that there. And then we should be fine. Actually, after this, we should be fine, actually. So let's go ahead and uh, grab one more gear. That looks good. Drop that off. And uh, see if we got everything, hopefully. Or I need one more. Did I not have one more? I thought I had one more uh, silver gear. Let's do that. There we go. And there we go. I think we have everything, uh, except for the boosters. These boosters are, if you guess, if you go to Crucible. I actually made three more Crucibles, too, because we're going to need them. But anyway, Crucible heat sources. These ones are times 20, and we can do them now. So we're going to have to go ahead and do those, too. So let's see if we can do... For them let's do that and i guess just toss them off and then go ahead and grab the boosters themselves probably don't have enough glass bottles because <laughs> they get all used for anti-rad potions uh, also aluminum i haven't found aluminum in the ground yet so we may have to go back to the asteroid to get more aluminum at some point so that's going to be a finite resource if it's not on earth anyway that's good there we're going to go ahead and grab this setup as well and uh, take it with us because <laughs> i feel like i should let's do that Maybe that there. And we're just going to set this one up upstairs. So we have this little upstairs area that we haven't used yet. And um, might as well put it here, right? So that is be going to be the way we do it there. Go ahead and grab the dynamos. So is there any way to get them faced the way I want? doesn't look like it. Do that there. Do that there. Oh, I need to go ahead and crescent that one. That one for a second. Just going to set them up kind of, kind of up in a way that I have in my head. So they're going to get... Lava pumped to the sides, doesn't matter which sides, and then the power will come out of this red bit, bit here, so that's fine. Might as well get them all upgraded as well, so let's do something like this. Just, uh, that looks good. And that'll up them to the second level, so they're able to take actually two augments now. Before they couldn't actually take any, then we can just take the augs and toss them in. You can right-click them in too, but you get more of that big hammer sound that I really don't want to listen to. <laughs> Anyway, that's good. I'm missing two and one. There we go. That's good there. Let's go ahead and break that torch. Let's find a new spot for it because uh, I have some 
spawn spots here still. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, set up next. I don't know which one we should set up next. Maybe that or maybe the lava setups. Maybe we'll do the lava setups next. Uh, next. Let's see here. So lava is going to set probably like right. I'm thinking about this. Like right here. There we go. That'll be where the crucible sits, right? So we're going to go ahead and grab the boosters, pop them right there. We might not have room here. We'll kind of see how it kind of turns out here. But anyway, that there. Sweet. And we're going to grab the crucibles, which are, you know, going to heat up the stone for us. Then we're going to need some hoppers. We happen to have four of those, so we should be good. Sweet. And then we're going to grab our four cobblestone generators and then pop them right here. And they're just going to start making lava for us at 20 times speed. So that is kind of the plan there. Then I guess I'm going to have to set up the controller in the other part over here. It doesn't really matter where it goes, to be honest. It just uh, needs to be done, right? Probably need a couple more torches up here, too. Anyway, let's go ahead and throw the... I guess we'll use the controller here and then the actual uh, energy cell right there. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, clear this off for a second. I want to get this thing kind of configured, too. I need to have two sides uh, set a certain way. Uh, I need the down. This would be down. I'm going to need that one as a output. So we'll want orange on that one. And which way? These ones are kind of based on which way you're looking. <laughs> north, right? Um, so north would be that way, right? No. Nope. It'd be this way right here. So that'd be left. And is that good? That looks good right now. That should be exactly how I want it, actually. So let's actually go grab it. Because I want to have the input. Actually, that's not right. We'll, we'll, we'll put it up here first. I got to think about how I'm going to set it up. I'm going to have those cables too, right? I guess I need this side as an input. So that'd be an input there. And then I need down uh, as a output, right? So that'd be input, output. Because it's going to need to power that one. Then the other sides don't even matter. So I need it on orange. So that looks good there. Then we're going to go ahead and start grabbing those connectors here. So we have the regular ones and the advanced. We're going to use the advanced on the dynamos. So we're going to go something like that there. Then everything else is just going to get a regular connector because it only needs a single connection. So something like that, maybe that there. So that is pretty much the setup. But uh, we need to go ahead. Oh, I also upgrade this. There you go. How much does this hold when it's upgraded? 18 million. That's a good little buffer there. But anyway, we're going to have to uh, buffer the power too to get this kind of started. But after that point, it'll take the power from the battery and we won't have to worry about that. But uh, we need to set up some channels here. So what we're going to do is create a channel. So XN has this little interface here. It has a whole bunch of different kind of channels you can set up. So eight channels. We need the first one to be fluid because we need to move the lava from the crucibles into uh, the actual dynamos. So the way we're going to do that is this create. And there we go. It's going to create a new channel. Then we're going to do an extract on it. And that should be all we need on the actual crucibles. And the direction should matter, the north and south, and east and west, um, because we're just the regular connectors on it, you can only pull one way. These ones, the advanced ones, can pull from any side of the machine because uh, we need to be able to pull power and the put the liquids into it from the, from different sides, right? But the advanced connectors can do that for us. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, this one, I guess these ones will be all inserts. Let's do that. That should be good. Awesome. And uh, I may change the directions on these ones as well and just set them up just so I know they're out of the way. <laughs> Let's do up. Let's do up there as well. That looks good. And up there as well. Awesome. Because we can only pull power out of this direction here. I'm not even sure what that is. I could check it out here. It's not down. Okay. It'd be like itself. I can just tell by disabling the connector for the south side, which is what I'm doing right there. And uh, I know it's going to be self when we go to pull the power. Anyway, that's good there. That should be fine. Next thing we need to do is create an actual power channel. We can do that really easy. And all we have to do now is basically create a extract. So we're just do an extract on every one of these. So something like that there. Sweet. Maybe an extract and a extract. That should be good there. And then we're going to want to do a insert on the battery, right? So an insert there and an insert there. And those sides should matter. That should be effectively ready, but we need to test it here. Uh, let's go down the elevator. Let's do that. And then we're going to need something to give it power. <laughs> so let's go steal this coal generator, I suppose. Something like that there. But, uh, we'll go grab a little bit of charcoal. I've been burning through my charcoal. I had 2,000. This drawer was full at one point. All went on powering that. <laughs> but anyway, 
uh, mostly because the Galactic Craft uh, machines are so inefficient. But anyway, let's go over here. I just need this to start it, just to prime it, basically. Give this a little bit of power so it can actually start the automation, at which point we should be able to use the power come from these dominoes um, to actually power it, kind of in the cycle. And uh, we should see what power, the maximum power we get out of these is going to be 240. So we just under 1,000, which is nice because it's going to be using the uh, flux ducts, right? I think I have flux ducts. Yeah, let's do flux ducts right here. And they can only move 1,000. So that's going to work out pretty fine. Let's see what's going on here. So that's getting power. Oh, maybe that can't direct output because it doesn't seem like it's direct out outputting right there. Let's try that. Let's go here. Maybe it needs a cable. Do I have any of those cables? Let's see if the actual flux cables work on this. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. They're nerdy. There we go. Gonna get power? Of course not. <laughs> oh, it doesn't have coal now. Let's wait for it to eat up. But uh, if everything's working here, this will be pretty sweet little setup, nice and compact. I used two elevators here too because I messed up when I was uh, building it. So let's get that out of there. There we go. Actually, I don't know which one's the right one. Yeah, I thought that was the right one. There we go. I remember doing that. But anyway, let's get that out of there. See if we're actually getting power now. Doesn't look like it. Oh man. Why do these Glatcraft uh, machines have to be so difficult? <laughs> anyway, let's go grab some wires. This is just for a second too. After this, I'm hoping to never use Glatcraft power again, uh, with thermal anyway. If I was using mechanism, would be a big deal. But I prefer the uh, cabling from thermal. So anyway, let's do that. There we go. And there we go. We got power, no problem now. We should see. Yeah, the lava's moving. It should be moving into these, right? So it's actually going. You can see there they're producing power. So that actually looks pretty good there. And then is this getting power? This is getting power. So that is a fully automated lava setup right there. And uh, that should be self-contained. Uh, we shouldn't have to worry about it. I just want to make sure this is working. So I'll take you gun. I guess take you gun, make you gun. <laughs> make sure the power here isn't going down. And that means it's going into the battery here. I mean, draining from the battery, I should say, and then using the power to uh, power the system. So it's kind of like a closed loop, right? You don't have to worry about everything. And uh, now we just need to pull power out of this and uh, move it somewhere. And uh, that should be good. The only problem is, oh, I do see a problem with this now. Um, no, I can run the cable off this. So I guess off the back of the front. So that would be, the back would be right here, right? Do an output. And then I can just take my cabling and run it wherever I want. And I believe my little kind of tunnels are down here. <laughs> probably gonna fall. And I'm probably gonna wire up the whole base with this now. It's kind of the plan. So I could just kind of run it down and uh, do it pretty clean, hopefully. So I get it down at least that far. There we go, sweet. And uh, yeah, just power the whole base off this because uh, yeah, the mech, not the mech does the power, the glass grab power has been just problematic <laughs> to say the least. Bring it down here, and I'll have to run it real weird here, but it doesn't matter too much, maybe like that. There we go. Just start bringing it across, and then we can just uh, get rid of these cables, because uh, I don't want to be any part of them anymore. There we go. Sweet. And I'll have to go ahead and do this for the other side as well. The only thing I'm not sure is this cabling is going to work with our solar panel that we have outside. I mean, that's only giving up on about 80 RF, but that may be an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and probably wire up that side of the base. So I'm going to run a cable. I believe it goes through under the floor here. There we go. All the way across to there. And uh, once I have that done, I'll come back and uh, maybe we'll move on. So the next thing we're going to get to here is going to be a mod called uh, Deep Mob Learning. Cool little mod is by a mod author called Iteration Funk, and it's used for automating mob drops. We really need it for, well, enderpearls. We are in desperately, we are desperately in need of enderpearls. The only time I really get into pearls is when it rains. For some reason, they always kind of like just swarm upstairs on those second floor little areas. And uh, I don't know why. Every time it rains, though, I've, I've been finding them up there. So, yeah, I need to have a way of getting that more consistently because I need it for my teleporter and crafting and stuff like that. So we're going to work on that. Let's go ahead and get some coal here. We need some coal. Let's go ahead and do that. Sweet. Grab one of them. Drop that off. And we need a material for the mod. It's actually called... Um, what is it? Sooty redstone? Something like that? We'll see in a second here. This stuff. It is a uh, soot covered redstone. So we'll go ahead and get about 32 of that, then do a little bit of crafting. Then I'm probably gonna have to go and do something by myself here. <laughs> I'll explain that in a second. Anyway, let's go do that. First thing we're needing here is this uh, deep learner, which is uh, basically a little handheld tool here. Uh, I meant to grab some 
obsidian. Let's do that. There we go. And uh, we're going to need that when we kill mobs. Um, I'll explain it all in a second. Let's go ahead and make this. Let's go ahead and grab the soot covered plates. Go ahead and grab some redstone repeaters. We're going to need quite a few of those, actually. Oh, we're out of stone. No, no, we're not. <laughs> Good enough. Let's see if that's enough anyway. Do that. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make this. This deep mob. What is it? Deep learner. This thing kind of sits in your offhand. And uh, it doesn't do anything yet. Uh, but I guess it will in a second. Kind of forgot. Need to make these two, the uh, blank data models. So let's go ahead and make, uh, how many of these do we want right now? Probably about three. Let's do that. Let's start there. We made four. Either way, we're going to go ahead and make this one right away. This one is for the Enderman. Let's do that. Probably also do the um, zombie one. Let's grab that. Zombie, where is it? Zombie is somewhere right there. There we go. Piece of rod flesh. And uh, we're going to take that. I guess we're going to take this out of our hand first and then shift and right click with it. And we're just going to install these. So this has a little interface here. When you pop these in, it gives you information about these. These are data models. So the data models are basically used in these other machines for other functions, right? And um, they basically produce you drops. So if I go to use on the Centerman data model, uh, for instance, it shows me I can run it through a simulation chamber uh, with this polymer clay and get this matter, then have a chance of getting these pristine ender matters that we can then take and use those in a loop fabricator and get ender pearls. And that's my goal. I want to get that. So we're going to get that done. Uh, you might notice on that too, when uh, we were looking at it down here, it says model tier faulty. Basically we need to kill. You can actually see in top left. It's kind of, it's kind of going over my health and my other, other thing there, health and uh, saturation, but it says I have six to go. Basically once I kill six of them, it's going to level up to basic. Once it's at basic, we can run it through a simulation chamber and start producing those, at least having a chance for the pristine models. Uh, the pristine um, crystals. What are they called there? I can't even remember. Pristine, uh, pristine Enderman matter. There you go. You can also use this matter for a bunch of stuff. So you can do coarse fruit, which would be nice because we could actually start growing Ender pearls as well, and uh, we can make the end stone we need to grow it with. So it's kind of the route we're going. Now, what we need to do is basically go around the world and kill mobs. <laughs> so it's going to take me a while. Oh, it is nighttime. At least I can go at least show you with a zombie real quick. It's gonna take me a while to hunt down uh, Enderman, but I think Enderman might be worth two points, but don't quote me on that. I guess I'll tell you after I do a few. But uh, some mobs are worth a few more points, I think. And there's a sword we can make later on that uh, doubles the points too. But anyway, let's do this real quick. There we go. And uh, I meant to have that in my offhand, but I don't. Let's get rid of him real quick. There we go. Do we have free drop redstone in this? I don't think so. I think it's just the space versions. Um, because in the asteroids they dropped redstone. I was thinking about farming them too. Anyway, let's go ahead and find our learner. Let's do that. Oh, he's blown up. Doesn't matter. But you can see there it says five to go, and that's what I'm going for. Once I have that up to six, I can run that through the machine. I'm doing the zombie because um, there's like a trial thing we can do. And we can get a drop and a weird uh, a special material from that. And uh, I don't want to do it with the enderman because it's way harder than it is with the zombies because it's uh, pretty easy with the zombies actually. So I'm going to wander around. I'm going to look for Enderman. I'm probably going to spend, <laughs> if I'm not lucky, probably about, you know, 40 minutes doing this. But uh, I got to get it done. And uh, yeah, I'll be back in a bit. And okay, I'm back. And I actually found enough Enderman to get this leveled up to basic level, which is uh, kind of what I was going for. I changed my journey map too. So you go into journey map and go into options. There you go. I changed it here to small icons. So I made sure it was set to small icons for the map. That way, you notice my map there now. You can see all those pigs. You can see a bunch of creepers. It made, I could actually see an enderman. <laughs> made it a lot easier to hunt them down. I wasn't having to look as much. I could just stare at my radar as I moved around. So that worked pretty good. Also got these, the uh, other one there, the zombie one up to advanced, which isn't too bad as well. Uh, I killed quite a few of those and I, I just kind of stopped killing them. Every time they level up too, you get more data per kill. So we actually get four per kill now. And I need 48, which equates to 12 instead of 6. So it doesn't go up. Like, it goes up, but it's kind of weird how it scales. So it's not really that hard. But at the same time, we won't be doing the Ender one, Enderman one that way anymore. I may do more with the zombie, and we're going to do the trial at some point. I just don't know if we're going to do the trial today. But the trial is going to make it so we can get to uh, the glitch armor. And the glitch armor is really powerful. Um, makes it so you can get uh, flight, creative flight, and immunity against fall damage, which is uh, pretty good. So pretty awesome there. We'll get that at some point. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and work on this right now. And uh, I guess hammer this out. 
Uh, the first thing we need here is a simulation chamber. So let's go ahead and make one of them really quickly. Uh, probably need a repeater, right? Of course we need uh, torches, man. Let's go ahead and grab some redstone torches. Let's make a uh, half a stack of them because uh, that's what I feel like. Because I'm tired of making them. <laughs> go ahead and grab a simulation chamber. Get this one set up first because it does take a little bit of time. Probably should pop that up. Also notice too, there's a quest line solely for this. Where was it? Over here. And it won't start the quest line until you get the book. And that's a bit of an oversight. So if you go to uh, deep here, check that out. Look in here. You'll see it says can be found in ice planes. I haven't found the ice planes yet. And we needed this for, I think, the dust generator as well. Um, but it doesn't lock you out of the mod. I can still do the entire mod. At some point, I'll find those crystals and unlock all these quests. It's just it won't let me get the book to start the quest line. <laughs> anyway. Let's go ahead and uh, set up this machine here. Let's probably pop it right there. Once we do that, we're going to grab the Enderman model and pop it over there. And uh, it's asking us now for polymer. So we're gonna have to make some polymer here. I'm gonna have to do a big batch of clay too because uh, we don't have much right now. But anyway, let's do that there. There, actually I could make the clay generator. I kind of forget about that. What is the clay generator? Clay generator. Yeah, I'll do that in between episodes. That is super easy. That I don't have to make clay anymore. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, drop that off. Go ahead and grab some poly right there. And we should be able to make a de decent amount. There we go. Now, all we have to do now is pop the polymer in here. There we go. It's right there. And it's basically what it what what it's basically doing right now is simulating a battle. The idea, anyway, um, simulating a battle inside the machine with we'll fight with a Enderman. And because you do that for some reason, you get some drops. <laughs> Pretty cool little concept. You see there, we did it the first time. We only have a 5% chance for the pristine. But once we get a pristine, we can go ahead and uh, do that with the um, loop fabricator, right? And uh, convert that into ender pearls. If you look at this too, you'll notice the data. It just went from one to two. I believe when that hits 48, it'll level up from basic to advanced. So same as uh, kind of like manually collecting, uh, manually collecting, no, manually killing Enderman, it's another way of kind of leveling it up. And each level, I think the RF cost goes up. So that is a thing as well. Let's go ahead and uh, make the loop fabricator though. Let's go ahead and do that because uh, we're gonna need that pretty soon. Uh, I don't have any of those things, the um, sub covered stuff. I might end up with more of these in time too, but uh, for right now, this should be good. Let's drop you off. And I guess we need actually one of those. Then grab the loop fabricator. What am I missing, man? Oh, yellow dye. I didn't even see that in there. Let's go grab some bone meal. That should be super easy to get. Why is, uh, it's the only thing about this inventory system. It'll put things in different chests. But anyway, let's do that. Also, I don't know if I showed the size of these things, but that's why I upgraded to the diamond ones. They're massive. <laughs> so until we get to, you know, the other inventory system. Let's head over here. Oh, there's one dandelion right here. I think we only need two, right? Eh, there we go. That looks good. Awesome. I think I actually got flowers at one point too for red terracotta. I must have threw away the dandelions. I'm a total derp. <laughs> anyway, let's go over here and uh, get that out of there. Pop you in there. Yeah, we should be able to make a loop, loop fabricator now. Let's do that. And hopefully we actually have a pristine matter. Like I said, it's only 5% chance. We haven't seen one yet. We're not getting any luck at all. So yeah, I want to get one so I can actually show you what's going on here. So I've gone ahead and let this thing run for about 55 cycles. Uh, so it's actually leveled up once. It's gone from basic to advanced. So it did that. Data collected 8 of 300. So it's going to have to go 292 before it levels up again. But uh, yeah, it's going to take a while. Or I can go kill them and get 10 points per. And that would be about 30 kills. I'm going to do it this way though because uh, I'm lazy. Uh, but I only got about 3 of these, which is pretty crazy. Because uh, yeah, it's just uh, pretty low. But basically how it works is... You can pop the, one of these in here, right? Then choose, uh, depending on what kind of pristine you got, which reward you want. So I want the end crystal or ender pearl. I want ender pearl, of course. And uh, just bam, just like that, just uh, six more ender pearls. Oh, we got two more. It's gone up from 5% to 11% too. So I should be seeing a lot more now. But I just go ahead and just grab ender pearls all willy nilly as long as I have polymer clay. I also went ahead and um, made a drawer with. Uh, yeah, just a clay generator while I was waiting. <laughs> so we already have uh, 800 blocks. So I don't have to worry about clay anymore. I, I kind of forgot about all those generators. I'm going to have to go back and make a bunch of them. I should also put this in a compacting drawer, which I may, um, because it should give us access to 
both the regular clay and the blocks, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll probably show you at the start of next video if I remember. But anyway, that's pretty cool, that's pretty awesome. That's going to be my method for enderpearls. And uh, as this levels up, I forget how much it goes, like the top level of it, I don't know if it tells you. Superior to self-aware, 42% at self-aware. That's pretty reliable uh, for enderpearls, so that is pretty awesome. So anyway, I think I'm going to actually uh, wrap this one up here. So as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. I want you guys all have a good one. See you guys next video. Later.